Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. So today we're carrying on with my series of my favourite pens and this is in answer to a question that I received on Instagram. Today we're going to look at my favourite fountain pens over 100 Aussie dollars. So join me now down on the mat and see what are my top five favourite pens. Here we are down on the table. We're going to look at my top five favourite pens over $100. This was extremely difficult because I've got to be honest, there aren't really any pens that I don't like. There's a couple which I've got issues with, but that's not to say I don't like them. I really enjoy them. So I've had to be really picky about what I'm going to go for. And if I record this tomorrow, chances are this selection will be slightly different. One thing I have limited myself to, there is only one pen per brand. So no more than one pen from any one manufacturer. So my first and my top five, I'm just fetching these out in price order. This goes to the Ranga Model 5. This is a big pen. Got an A4 sheet of paper here. This A4 Rhodia paper. And this pen goes virtually all the way across. It is a big pen. To give you an idea, here's Alami AL Star. That's how big this pen is. The cap, when it comes off, twists off. It's very nice. This green stripe pattern looks quite pretty. To reveal a big section, really looks nice. In the hand, it feels very comfortable. That section, nice and wide, so comfortable to use. And I would think if you've got like issues with arthritis in your hand, I do have a little bit. Having this wider section, I mean, certainly for me, makes this really comfortable to use. It's one of my most comfortable pens. The nib, this is a number six size Ranga nib. If I was to get another Model 5, I would try and get a number eight size nib because this nib, it looks quite small on this pen, even though it's a reasonable size nib. This is a cartridge converter. Loads of threads on it. There's a converter. I always use this with the converter, but everything's resin so there's nothing stopping you from eyedropper in this if you want to the problem is if i did that i think the amount of ink this would hold it would last me for over a year so we've got here a ranga model 5 i say it's got a broad nib it's a ranga nib they do give a lot of nib choices you can get bark you can get yoho you can get steel which is what this is you can get gold you can even get titanium and as i say i believe there's even a number eight size nib cost wise you're looking at about 142 aussie dollars so you know it's not inexpensive but i think for what you're getting it's a reasonable price the ink it's by diamine and it's elf so one of the Inkvent inks Downside with this, if you're using like the 30 mil diamine bottles, this section just does not fit in the bottle. The Elf I've got, that's in, I think it's a 50 mil bottle, so it fits in quite nicely. Is there any line variation? So there's no pressure. Here's with pressure. Looks a little bit wider, not much. So none with, none with. Yeah, maybe ever so slightly wider, but not that you'd really notice. Going to move the mic down to the page and we'll write a sentence. That's a nice smooth nib. There's very little feedback. That's one of the things I would have liked is maybe a little bit more feedback, but I'm being very picky with that. Not sure if you could hear it over the sound of the dog snoring, but the nib sounds as if it's singing as it's going across the page. There's like, maybe your best way is like, there's a, a hum to it. Sounds quite nice, really is. This Rhodia paper though, it has got some uh, coating on it. All in all though, for what it is, it's a pen. I won't say I've got inked up all the time, but I've got it inked up maybe three quarters of the time. 
it's just so comfortable to use and it's a pen I'm quite happy to reach for if I'm looking for something. And certainly if I've got a day when my hand's aching a bit, this is the ideal pen for me. So that's the Ranga Model 5. So we're going from India with the Ranga pen to Taiwan with the Opus 88 Coloro. This is blue and teal. Nice looking pen. So the, mat the material, this blue material here on the cap, on the ends, that's ebonite. And then we've got resin in between it. It's unfortunate the resin to me is just too dark. So I do struggle to see the ink level through this. Although if I hold it up to the light, I won't do now because I'll blind myself with the lights I've got on at the moment. I can just about make out the level. Why that's important is this is a Japanese eyedropper pen. So to fill the pen, you would unscrew the section from the body, making sure you hold it this way up. Then using either a blunt nose syringe or an eyedropper, you would gently pop the ink into the body, letting it go all the way down, and then screw the section back on. I've got this open here. There is a shut-off valve. Again, you can't really see it, so I won't try working it. But as I twist this closed, a rod down the middle goes down. At the end, there's a rubber seal which goes down and seals off the section from the rest of the body. I always leave this open when I'm at home. If I'm going out somewhere, yes, I will close it and then open it up when I want to use the pen. The nib is a bit on the small side. I think it's a number five nib. We've got Opus 88 though engraved on it there. And then we've got that plastic feed. Just move this page up ever so slightly and we'll do some writing. So we've got the Opus 88 Claro. Again, it's got a broad nib. I do like my broad nibs on my pens. It's a steel nib. Price-wise, so I priced this up a couple of days ago on Colt pens, and it was 146 Aussie dollars. The ink by Diamine, and it's Jack Frost. Another ink vent ink. Really nice though. I like the way this ink looks in this pen. Nice, gorgeous blue. We'll come back after it's had a little bit of time to dry because we should be able to see some sheen then. Line variation. So there's no pressure. There's with pressure. Definite line variation here. Now, it's not designed as a flex nib. It's just I'm putting a bit of pressure on and I am noticing that wider line. So none, with, none, and with, none, and with. I like this nib. It's got a softness to it. It's really pleasurable to use. We'll move the mic and we'll write the sentence. So that one, it's not singing to me. It's like it's whispering. You can hear it. There's this nice audible feedback. The nib is soft. It doesn't feel smooth. It doesn't feel stretchy. It's just a nice softness to it. There's a nice, a little bit like a bounce is how I would describe it. Now I've had this pen two years, so that nib has had quite a lot of use. Again, this is a pen that's quite often inked up. And what I generally have is either Jack Frost, John Frost, or Diamine Garland in here. I seem to alternate between them. My only issue with Diamine Garland is there's some shimmer in it, so I have to make sure I clean up the, the nib and feed whenever I've used that. So this is the Opus 88 Coloro. Move the page up again. Pen number three. We're now going to pilot, so a Japanese pen. Bit of a tour of the world at the moment, isn't it? This is the Pilot E95S. I've got a number of pilot pens, love them all. But because I was limiting to one per manufacturer, that's why I picked this. I could have quite happily picked all pilot pens, I've got to be honest. This pocket-sized pen may be a little bit on the larger size for a pocket pen. Nice thin size. I love the colour in it and the shape. It just looks elegant, doesn't it? The cap, it will come off. And then the pen part of it with the body is quite small. Let's unscrew the end. Now in here, I've got a cartridge. 
It does come with a converter, but I found with the converter, once you put it inside, the actual whole part of the converter that you can see was in there, and all you had sticking out was the twisting mechanism. So you could never get an idea for your ink level. So all I do is I just use the cartridge that was included and I just fill it with a blunt nose syringe with whatever ink I want and then just give it a good clean when I'm changing my inks. So unposted, as I showed you, really small, but that changes as soon as you post it. Once you post it, we've got a gorgeous sized pen. It looks nice. We've got this 14 karat gold nib here. This is a medium nib, I believe. Yeah, medium. And it's a really nice inlaid nib. The pen though, how does it write? Because that's what matters. So we have here a Pilot E95S. And it's medium and it's a 14 karat gold. It's not a cheap pen. So to buy this pen, you're looking at 195 Aussie dollars. And that was after searching around a bit. I ended up getting the price for this from Pulp Addiction here in Australia. The ink, well, we've got a bit of a dye mine kick today, haven't we? Because it's yet another dye mine ink. And it's called Ancient Copper. It's not exactly a colour match for the pen, but I just think it looks nice. They look nice as a combo together. Line variation. So here's no pressure. Then with some pressure. Again, not designed for the pressure really. I, although I say with pressure, it's just a little bit. So I am getting a slightly wider line. None, with, none, with, none, with. So see a little bit of line variation. We'll move the mic to write the sentence. Gorgeous nib. Not as soft as some of my other pilot nibs, but certainly also not as stiff as some of the other ones. We get a nice line. It's got a little tiny bit of feedback. I can feel the nib as it's going over the page. It's really nice, really enjoyable. I do like pens where I get that feedback because to me, a, a glassy nib, I just don't enjoy. And this one is such a pleasure. I say it's a small pen. It is a thin pen. I do find for long note taking sessions, it is too thin for me. But for most of what I do, which is just writing down the odd, you know, bullet point or sentence, perfectly fine. Lovely pen, looks elegant, really nice. It's a pen I'm happy to take with me anywhere. So that's the Pilot E95S. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos, and then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel a link will be in the description down below. So pen number four. This was the first expensive pen I bought. This is a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. This is in dark Hawaii. I absolutely love this pen. It's, I say it was my first expensive pen. It's still a pleasurable pen. It does have some drawbacks to it though. This is a piston filling pen. I'm not going to work the piston mechanism, obviously. It's this spaghetti pattern, absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Look, we've got blues in there, we've got browns. And the way it just catches the light, hopefully that's coming over on the camera. Steel nib, the nib's made by Yoho. There we go, you've got the Leonardo branding on there. The downside of this pen, there is no ink window. So with it being a piston filler, it does hold a lot of ink. 
but you don't know what your ink level is. And that's a problem that I've found with this pen. If I'm in a meeting, if I'm writing some notes, I'll be writing away merrily. Then all of a sudden, what happens? It just stops. It's run out of ink. And I had no idea it was that low. So that's one of the downsides with this pen. In the hand, it's very nice. It's very comfortable. This is the Grand Air model. So it's got that little bit extra length. I love the section. This section is so comfortable. I believe in newer models, they've changed it to be more of a, a hourglass type section, which I think is a shame because I love this. I hold my pens low down and this is just perfect. You know, my fingers fit there down at the bottom and then where the section starts to go up, it's just that natural place in my fingers where it happens. Such a nice pen, such a comfortable pen. So this is the Leonardo Memento Zero. Grande. And it's a medium nib. It's a steel nib. Loads of different nib options for this. You can even get a gold nib. But to get a gold nib, I think you're virtually doubling the price. Price wise, say this was my first expensive pen. 377 Aussie dollars. That's a lot of money for a pen. I will be honest with it. But it's such a pleasurable pen to use. It's really, really nice. Looks so attractive. The ink that I've got in here is by Dominant Industry, which I believe is a Korean company. It might be South Korea. I can never rem remember which is. I think North Korea is not is the one with Kim Jong-un. So, yeah, South Korea, I would think. And it's called Winterwood. It's got like a... It's a brown, but to me... There's hints of green in there, which is where I can see when you're walking through a forest, and you've got the, the dark brown of all the, the bark on the trees, but then you've got that green of the moss. That's what it reminds me of. Line variation, no pressure. With pressure, not a lot of line variation. It's a fairly stiff feeling nib, this. Let's move the mic to write the sentence. Of the four pens so far, this is the one which has got the loudest audible feedback. I love it. I really do. It's so nice. It's like, again, it's like it's whispering to me as I'm writing. And every stroke of the pen, you can hear this whisper going on. It's not glassy smooth, but there's not a lot of roughness to it. You can feel it as it's writing, but it's more, it's more the audible side with this pen that I think you've got. It is a very nice looking pen. I say we've got this brown ink at the moment. I generally stick with blue inks in this. You know, I like to be a bit matchy matchy, but you know, occasionally I do put different browns in because when we look at this spaghetti pattern, you know, we have got browns in there as well. So I think I can get away with brown ink. So this is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. Now my final pen. This one I've had it about nine months now. It's an absolutely gorgeous looking pen. It's a pen, I've just done a fountain pen focus for it. Not sure if that will have released by the time this comes out, but in that I describe this pen as just being elegant. It's the only word I can use for it. This is the Waterman Karen in Marine Amber. A very, very elegant looking pen. Made in France, and this material, let me try and hold it up. The problem with this material is cameras do not do it justice. It is so nice. The nib on here is another inlaid nib. This time, though, we're talking 18 karat gold. So look at that nib. And then if I unscrew, we've got a cartridge converter. On here, now this is a nice little touch. There's two O-rings down there near the bottom. It's metal fitting, so it's not to allow you to eyedropper it. What it does is, as you're screwing that on, you get to nearly to the bottom and it engages with them O-rings. So it creates a little bit of a softer landing for you. I think that's really nice. The pen is very nice to hold. Bit on the thin side. That's the only downside for me. 
The other thing I find with the way this section is, I often end up with the nib rotated oddly and the pen does seem to have a bit of a sweet spot. If it's not in the right orientation, it just doesn't seem to want to write. So I have to be a bit thoughtful when I'm using this pen just to make sure I've got that nib right. And in a way, that's actually a good thing because it's making me think about what I'm doing when I'm writing. So we'll write with this one. So we have here a Waterman. Karen. Medium. And I say it's 18 karat gold. Not a cheap pen. I priced it up the other day at Colt Pens in the UK. 400 Aussie dollars. The ink I've got in here is by Diamine. And it's Earl Grey. Now, I was experimenting when I put this in. I thought, mm, not sure. I actually quite like it. I think the ink, because it's a grey colour, it's not black, it's not blue, it's unusual. But it's an ink I could still use if I had to fill in an official document. I'd be quite happy using this instead of black. Really nice and it's actually not too bad. You know, grey, so it'll go with virtually everything. Line variation. There's no pressure. Can you see there what I was saying about the line orientation? There we go. There's with pressure. So none, with, none, with, none and with. This nib does feel fairly soft and I am seeing a little bit of line variation if I put pressure on it. Be careful though because if you damage this nib it's a lot of money to replace it. We'll move the mic down to the page and we'll write a sentence. This is such a nice pen to use. I really enjoy using it. It's not a pen I take out of the house very often because similar to that Leonardo Memento Zero, to be honest, if I was to lose it, it's so much money to replace that. Well, I would never replace it because it would be hard to justify spending this sort of money on another pen. It's so nice though. I love this material. Again, it's not a color that is easy to see on camera. It just, it's got like brown, it's like an orangey brown colour where I see the light reflecting on it. So pretty. I actually like this end vanilla as well. It's different, isn't it? Nice writing pen. Not as much feedback as I was getting with that Memento Zero Grande. To be honest, not as much feedback as I was getting with most of these pens. But it's still nice. It's still enjoyable to use. And I do like this Earl Grey in there. I may stick with that. And just look at all this shading we're getting. It looks so nice. So this is the Waterman Karen. Now I'm just going to go back to that Opus 88 Calaro and the Diamond Jack Frost. Can we see any sheening coming through? Hopefully this will come through on the camera. I can see a little bit to my eye. Whether it comes over on the camera, I'm not sure. I do struggle with this ink though, no matter what pen I've had it in to get much in the way of sheen. So let's get this out of the way and we'll fetch in the pens for one final look. So here are my top five pens that picking today, I class in my top five. I'd say there's so many that I like that tomorrow it could be completely different. But we start with the Ranga Model 5, so big it doesn't fit in the camera view. The Opus 88 Calaro, the Pilot E95S or Pilot Elite the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, and the Waterman Karen. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your top five pens? Please share down below what's your list of your top five pens over 100 Aussie dollars. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.